lots of people have been getting in touch to ask, who's this plucky upstart Jacob Rees-Mogg? And is he as much fun as he seems? <laughs> well, the answer is yes, Nish. Jacob Rees-Mogg is a huge amount of fun, quintessentially English and old-fashioned, a delightful Bertie Worcester-esque eccentric. <laughs> Jeeves and Worcester. Downton Abbey, The Crown, British people love throwbacks to a simpler time when the upper classes ruled over us with patronising benevolence. <laughs> Nish, do you like being patronised? No. No? I, I think you'll find you do. <laughs> but is there more to Mog than this old-fashioned facade? People are really engaging with Mog's authenticity. He's not afraid to be traditional and vote with his deeply held Christian beliefs. So, let's take a quick look at this aristocrat millionaire's voting record. Now, as you can see here, he consistently votes against gay rights, women's reproductive rights, human rights and equality. He's an absolute rotter, isn't he, Nish? <laughs> Just like Bertie Wooster in P.G. Woodhouse's acclaimed novels, Bertie and the Disabled Scrounger. <laughs> and don't be gay, Jeeves! <laughs> Rees Mogg attributes many of his opinions to his Catholic faith. He's talked candidly about how his religion dictates that he opposes same sex marriage. He also opposes abortion, even in cases of rape and incest. Oh, hang on, I've just seen this jaunty photo of him. <laughs> He's such a card, I love him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> does seem to rather cherry-pick parts of the Bible to follow, though. He's oddly obsessed by the traditional marriage bit, but not so worried about all of the taking care of the poor and the meek. You see, Jesus was famously quite pro-meek. <laughs> Whereas Mog is an unashamed meek sceptic. He voted to block unaccompanied child refugees in Calais from finding safety in the UK. Thinking about it, Rees Mogg would have absolutely hated Jesus. He was an immigrant who could walk on water. Ah! <laughs> the worst nightmare! <laughs> no passport control for the Son of God. Absolutely not. <laughs> Now, the English love wordplay, and he's even got a half-hearted pun on his own name, Mogmentum. It's a play on the Labour organisation Momentum, but he's got Mog inside it, which isn't something any of us want. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just take a Mogment to look at his attitude <laughs> to women's reproductive rights. And one thing people really like about Mog is that he's very polite. And when asked whether abortion should be opposed in every case, he replied, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Lovely. Well, etiquette is everything when it comes to who controls my womb. I've always been very clear on that, Nish. <laughs> uh, another thing that people love about the pro-life Etonian is that he is unapologetic about his views. And I can understand that. When people hold terrible views that can ruin people's lives, the last thing you want is an apology. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who else was famously unapologetic in their views? All of the bad people in history. <laughs> Indeed, Jacob Rees-Mogg stated in an interview, I am what I am, <laughs> echoing the voices of gay people across the world whose rights he sought to curtail. <laughs> so, Nish, the question is, was Jacob Rees-Mogg born this way, or is it more of a lifestyle choice? I don't think anyone chooses to be Jacob Rees-Mogg. No. <laughs> Thing is sure, Rhys Mogg's eccentricity, posed or authentic, provides the perfect cover for some horrifying reactionary values. A Mogg premiership would help return Britain to a golden age where women were second-class citizens, homosexuality was illegal, and foreigners, even desperate children, were treated with utter suspicion. It would be just like P.G. Woodhouse's hilarious novel, Bertie Erases 100 Years of Human Progress. <laughs> Thank you, Nish. Thank you very much, Rachel Paris.